Welcome back guys to a new Morales Blueprints video in which we're gonna clone the Etherscan website. Now, Etherscan is probably the most used blockchain explorer out there and we're gonna make sure our website looks the same and it works the same. Now, if you don't know what Morales Blueprints videos are, it's basically our videos we launch once a week where we build cool Web3 projects using even cooler Web3 tech stack. We're usually uh, have Morales as the base because we can fetch all the data we need. So if you haven't checked that out, make sure you do by the end of this video. Now, what you can see right here is not Etherscan website. It's actually our clone. And if I go over to the Etherscan website, you can see that it looks pretty, pretty similar. We're going to build this together. I'm going to show you step by step. Before we do that, let me show you how it works. So we have the beautiful search function right here. We can input a wallet address and see the transactions of that specific wallet. We have this nice sponsored sections right here. We have the ad. And if you go to money.morales.io, which this ad shows you, you can get free Morales beans, 500 Morales beans for free. If you don't know what that project is all about, link in the description below, make sure you check that out. Now we have this hero section, we have the current ether price, we have uh, the latest finalized block and its block number, the amount of transactions it had, and then we have uh, some of the latest blocks right here, the amount of transactions for each and every block. Now this isn't hard coded guys, this, all this data is fetched using the Morales API. And we also have the latest transactions right here, the from and the to address, uh, the value and when those happen. This is all data we get from the Morales API. Now, if you want to build this project, make sure you go to morales.io to sign up for your account because you will need your API key. Now, in order to build this, make sure you choose the pro account because that will take your dApp to the next level. Now, if we go to the top, let's input a wallet address right here and search for it. Then we can see the transactions for that specific wallet address. And this looks exactly the same as it does right here. So if I search in etherscan.io, you can see this transaction table right here. You have the transaction hash, you have the method, the block, uh, when this happened, the from, the to address, if it's an ingoing or outgoing transaction, and the value. And if we go back to our clone, you have the exact same data. None of this data is hard-coded. Uh, here in the method, I'm actually using the latest endpoint we have from Morales. We launched this last week and you can get the method right here. Now, you can see that if it's a transfer, we output transfer. If it's a multi-call, if it's an atomic match, a private mint, for example, and so on and so on. Guys, I hope you're excited to see how to build this. Hit the like button and let's jump straight into it. Hey, I'm Joseph, your Web3 instructor from Sweden. I've been into crypto since 2017 and have been building in the space since 2021. In my free time, I enjoy playing paddle, going to the gym or hanging out with my dog. I always try to enjoy some good pancakes, but that's for another time. Now let's get back to the video. Okay, okay, first things first, let's create our Morales account to get our API key. Now I'm at morales.io slash pricing, so you can see the different prices and what you get with every plan. You have the free plan, which is good for starting out, but if you want to take your dApps to the next level, if you're really serious about building within the Web3 space, then go for the pro account. I promise you, you will never regret this. And you can see the differences right here. If you scroll down a little bit, you see that with the pro account, you have 60 CU per second. That's compute units. Now with the starter, the free one, you have only 25 and you won't probably be able to build this etherscan clone with the starter pack on itself so make sure you go for the pro account once you've created uh, your account log into that one and go to web3 apis and there you have your api key that you can copy from here and use it within our project let's open up terminal right here and create a new directory i'm gonna call mine etherscan dash morales dash clone like so and then let's cd into that one as well and once we're here, we can create a backend folder first and seed into that one. We're gonna do npm init dash y. Let's install a few dependencies. So we're gonna need course, Morales, Express, and dot env like so. And once this is done, I'm gonna seed it back to the root folder of the project and I'm gonna open it in Visual Studio Code. Open backend and in package.json, let's create a start script. So add start like so, and it's gonna be node index.js like so. Hit save, we can close this one, and then we're gonna create a new file 
inside the backend folder it's gonna be called env and here is where you want to paste in your um api key that we got from your morales account hit save and close this one as well and then we can create a new file called index.js like this and this is gonna be our backend server okay so we're gonna have to import the dependencies we just installed it's gonna be an express server so we're gonna have to set that up and then we're also gonna have to set up all the different endpoints for making a, requ a request from the front end to the back end. And once we hit those endpoints, we're gonna do a request from our back end to the Morales API to get the specific data before we execute things on this data. Before we start, let me zoom in a bit so it's easier to see. And we're gonna start by uh, importing everything that we need basically. So let's start with Express. Like this. We're gonna have our server on port 5001, so let's uh, make sure we define that. Let's also paste this and right here is where we get our API key from the .env file and we store it as Morales API key. So let's add the Morales.start function and pass along our API key like this. And add the .them function to start listen to our backend server which is on port 5001. So let's do uh, this and then we're just gonna console log that we are listening to the server basically. like this now let's go on and create the first endpoint it's gonna be a get request so let's do app.get and it's gonna be on slash get eth price now what this will do it will give us the current price of ether and that's what we display on the top left corner and also if we reload this page to go to the starting page you can see we also display the current price right here now let's make sure we set this up correctly So we're gonna use a get token price endpoint provided by moralis.evmapi.token and we're gonna pass along two parameters it's gonna be the address of the um, token we want to get the price for and then the second parameter is going to be the chain id and it's gonna be for ethereum so let's add this right here and up here let's add the address for the ether contract like this it's save and then let's add the return So we're gonna return 200 and also um, the response in JSON format like this. I forgot to add and wrap this in a try catch. So let's do this and make sure we move all of this in here like so. And then let's add our catch like this. And we want to console log that something went wrong. And let's also add our error message like this and we also want to return that is 400 like this we're gonna create two more endpoints they're gonna look pretty similar it's gonna be a uh, get request we're gonna use try catch and the only difference is gonna be to which endpoint we do the request here in the Morales API now tag along and let's create those as well. The second endpoint we're gonna create is the one that's gonna give us all the data, all the transactions about a specific wallet address. So for example, when we paste the wallet address inside this input field and hit search, we're getting this uh, transactions table that I showed you earlier. This is the data we're gonna fetch now to be able to build that transaction table. And it's gonna be a little bit different than from this one, but still very, very similar. So let's do a, another get request. This time it's gonna be on slash address.
And because in this request, we're gonna send the wallet address from the front end to the back end client. We need to get it somewhere, somehow from the parameters. And this is how we're gonna do it like this. We're also gonna add the chain like this. Actually, let me add, this is gonna be in a sync as well. And we have two different endpoints right here. We have the get wallet transactions, and we also have this get wallet transactions verbose, which is the new endpoint that I mentioned inside the intro. So let's choose that one. And also let's go to morales.io and jump straight into the documentation. Let's go to that specific endpoint. So we can see under transactions, we have these two right here. So the difference is when we choose this decoded one, which is the one, uh, the verbose one, the one we're gonna use, you see the data we're getting back. It's a little bit different. We have these specific fields right here that gives us the method. So what kind of transaction is this? For example, this one is transfer. And then as you saw in here, it can be different ones this endpoint it is what gives us all that data so that's the one we want to use right here So you can see, even though it's a little bit different because we're getting this data from the front end client, it still looks very similar. So we have one more endpoint and it's gonna need a little bit more code than these two. Let me minimize this to make it easier. So the last endpoint, we're gonna do two requests within that endpoint and it's gonna be to get the block data. So we're gonna use the first endpoint we're gonna use is the get block by date. We're gonna provide the current time in milliseconds and we're gonna get back the closest block to that date. And then we are also gonna use the get block by hash because we want to get the latest transactions, which is of the latest block. But we also want to get other blocks previous to the latest block. So we can display that data right here, which are the latest blocks, but also the latest transactions. So we're gonna use these two endpoints right here. All right, so let's create a new endpoint between these two. And it's also gonna be a get endpoint, this time on slash get block info like this. We're gonna get the current date and then provide the chain ID once again, like this. So we're gonna need this block number for two reasons. The first one is because we want to display it right here. And the second one is because we need this to get uh, to make a call to the get block by hash or block number and to get the parent blocks and be able to display those as well right here. Let's create an empty array called previous block info and then have a for loop. There isn't a specific reason why I chose number five right here. It's just to show you that you can do this a few times. And it is because I want to display these blocks right here. You can have a bigger number. That means you're going to have more data to, to display. So the first thing we want to do inside the for loop is to do a request.
So the first time we're inside this for loop, we're gonna use this parent block number that we got from here. But for the other times, we want to update this to be the recent parent block number. So we're gonna do block number or parent hash be equal this parent hash that we're getting from this request right here. So the next thing we want to do is, let me show you right here, we have this latest transactions table and these transactions are from the latest block right here. So we want to see if we are within this loop, if we are within the latest block number or if we have iterated through this loop a few more, a few times. And we can easily do that by checking this value right here. So that's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna add an if statement that checks if i equals to zero. And if that is true, then we want to get these latest transactions. And we're gonna push all those transactions into this array right here. So let's add that and add the push function. like this and if you aren't sure about what data you have you can console log this response from here and check that out or you can go to morales.io to this get block endpoint right here and once you try this out you get a response down here so you can see that this is actually the response we're getting back and if we control this so we have hash we have block timestamp the from and to address we can see that in here we have the hash, we have the timestamp, we have the from and the to address, for example, and we also have the value right here. So this is the data we're actually getting back from the API, and you can easily check it right here, or if you want to console log this response, if that feels easier to you. Now that's it for our if statement. This is everything we want to do just for the first um, iterations because this is the latest block number but we want to do some more pushing into this uh, previous block info array so we want to get the block number for example we can do it like this we want to get the total transactions And now we want to create this response variable that we are going to send back to our front-end client. It's going to be an object, so let's add latest block like this. And we're going to have the latest block, Dr. Jason block. And then we're also going to have the previous block info, which is the, this array that we just pushed all the data into. Lastly, let's also return this to the front-end client. and then add the catch 
something goes wrong, we want to display that error. And that's it for our backend server. Now, if anything is unclear to you, or if you're curious why we're doing how we're doing things, make sure you post a question in the comment section below. I will be there and answer all your questions. I'm gonna open my terminal to create the Next.js application for the front-end client. Make sure you are in the root folder and then do npx create next app, add latest. Now let's cd into the frontend folder. We're gonna install a few dependencies. Let's start with uh, Axios, let's do Moment, and Fort Awesome, which are uh, for using their icons. We're gonna use a few more dependencies. I'm gonna show you the final package JSON code, but before that, one of the dependencies we're going to use is uh, Web3 UI Kit, which is a GitHub repo we have created here at Morales, and it helps you build beautiful and lightweight UI components for uh, web3 development basically i've installed the required dependencies so if we go to front end folder and package json we can see that i've installed the web3 ui kit icons and core for using uh, galleries and components from this library and also react font awesome and free solid svg icons from fort awesome great now let's start with pages and index.js this is gonna be our home page and this is the default we're getting from Next.js. So we're gonna style this and change it a little bit to make it look as we want to and remove the functionality and the code that we actually don't need to use at all. like this so a little bit cleaner and we're gonna import a few components that we are gonna create soon and those are gonna be displayed right here so we're gonna rem remove this paragraph tag and add the components in here instead let's go on and create the components folder inside this front end folder and create our first component it's gonna be the header so let's do header.js and header is gonna contain all this we can see right here so we're gonna create this menu, we're gonna add the logo, we're gonna add this tab on the top, and we're also gonna do a request inside the headers tab to get the, the current price of ETH. And to do that, we're gonna need to import a few things. So let's start by importing use effect, and also use state. Let's import Axios so we can do the request to our backend server. Let's also import image because we want to display uh, the logo on the top left corner and we're also gonna import the css file now i'm not gonna go too deep into the styling i'm not gonna show you every bit of the classes we're creating and what we include in those i'm gonna upload the code to github and share the link in the description below so if you're curious about what each classes contain you can take a look at that otherwise just tag along and add the same classes use the same css file and you should be fine the last thing we want to import is the logo itself. So let's do that. I've uploaded it to a folder inside the public directory. The folder is called assets and then the file is logo.p like this. So the first thing we want to do inside the header function is to um, get the current ETH price and set that to this state variable right here. So let's do that. Let's add the use effect right here. 
and then add this function get ETH price. It's gonna be an async function. We're gonna do a get request to our backend server, which is on localhost column 5001 slash get ETH price like this. And then we also want to call this function price like this. So this is what will happen immediately when we render the header component. And we do a request to our backend server on this endpoint. Then our server will do a request to the Morales API to get the current Ether price, give us the response back, and then we're gonna extract the USD price from this object and set that, that to this state variable. And that means we can use this variable to then display the value. Let's go on and render everything. So let's add return and a section right here with the class name of styles.header. And another section. So this one will be the main section basically and it, everything will be rendered inside of this. So let's continue and we're gonna add ETH Now this will display the current ETH price, the value we set right here. And we add two fixed and the number two because we only want to display two decimals. And we can try this out. So let's open the terminal and go back one step. Open a new terminal. Let me zoom in. Like this. We fix it a bit so it's easier to see. So we are going to seed into the front end folder on one of them and uh, into the back end folder on the other one. And let's do npm run start to the, on the back end and npm run dev for the front end. Now, if we go to localhost 3000, we see all the components will be in here. That's because we don't render this component yet. So let's do that by importing a header. like this and then instead of having this one right here let's remove it and add header instead save go back and there we have it the beautiful header with the current ether price as easy as that guys now let's go on and continue with the header component so we can add the menu and the logo as well now let's go on and create the navigation so let's add another section with the class name of styles.navbar and within this one, let's add an image tag displaying the logo. Let's give it an alt text for Etherscan logo, for example. And then some styling, styles.logo, like this. And this is gonna be a self-closing tag, so let's do it like so. And then add another section with the class name of styles.menu, like this close this one up so this is gonna contain all the navigation items and each item is gonna be a paragraph and they will look very similar so I'm gonna paste the code in like so and minimize the SVG code and then go through each and every paragraph very quickly and briefly because they are very very similar to each other so let's do that like this so we have the home uh, navigation item we have blockchain we have token we have 
NFT resources developers. We have more and then we have the sign-in. So all the SVGs except for the sign-in is the arrow for, for the drop-down menu. So we have that styling as well right here. But the SVG for the sign-in is this profile icon and we have some uh, other styling to it. So if I save and go back, we can see that we just added this navigation part with the logo and then each and every item. We see the arrow for the drop downs and then we also see this profile icon right here for the sign in. Now this is very beautiful and with just a few lines of code we can easily create this. Now let's go on and create the next component because header component is now done. So let's close this one and create a new file called search.js and we can import use state. Like this we can we can import axios here as well let's go back and add the same styling like so then we can import bean and beans and this is gonna be from the web3 ui kit icons and also the illustration from web3 ui kit core now this is very easy so let's go to the Web3 UI kit, we have this live storybook demo. So let's click that one. And from here, we can easily find the things we need. So for example, let's say we want to display um, something with a card. So let's say NFTs, we can easily display them like so, but change the this image and this text, for example. We can do different things. We can display pro plan and stuff like that. So for example, if we go to gallery, I search for bean. So this is what we are gonna import. So this bean right here and this, these beans from here as well. And then we have illustrations so we can take different things from here as well. Now this is very easy, very, very clean and, and you can easily take things from here and display them in your dApp. We're gonna add our export default function called search. And uh, let's start by creating some state variables. So the first one is gonna be show results or show result. This is gonna decide if we're gonna show the results or not because we don't want to show any results before we got them. So we're gonna have this Boolean state variable and it's gonna be false when we start. We're gonna have this result variable, it's gonna be an empty array and we're gonna populate that with the data we get back. And then let's also have the last one, which is search input. And it's gonna be an empty string. So let me add the equal sign there. So this is gonna be the data we put in our input field and to get that data we're gonna need to have a function so we're gonna have a change handler function it's gonna take one argument and set that search input state to the value of that argument so what will happen is we will call this function as an event handler on the input field that we're gonna create later on and once you type in the input field we're gonna take this the value basically and store it in this variable right here and then we can use it from here so let's create the search function which is going to use this variable and make the request to the backend server so let's add a new function handle search let me spell that correctly like this So we're gonna later on, as I said, create the search input field and it's gonna have the ID of input field and we can easily select it by using document.query selector and we're gonna set the value to an empty string basically because what we want to do is when we hit search, we want to empty the input field and then let's do a request using Axios 
to our backend server once again. This time on slash address like this. And we're gonna send along a parameter. It's gonna be the address, which is the search input value from right here. So what happens is we have the input field. So you put a, you paste in a wallet address. We take that value and we store it in this state variable using the set search input function. And then we take this and we send it to the backend. Next, we want to get the response back and store it in the result variable. And we also want to set show results to true. So let's do that. like this let's render our data now so let's add the return with a section with the class name of styles dot search container like this and this is gonna contain everything for this component let's add another section this time the class name is gonna be styles dot search header like this the search header section is gonna contain two sections one is gonna be for the search section and one is going to be the add section so let's start with the first one first like this give it a class name And within this input section, we're gonna add the input field and the button. So let's start with the input field. Give the class name of styles.input field. Type is gonna be text. We're gonna give it the ID of input field. And also name gonna be input field. We're gonna give it the max length of 120 we're gonna set the placeholder so it's gonna be this right here then it's gonna be required and we're gonna add the on change handler we're gonna call this change handler function we created earlier and this is also gonna be a self-closing element like this and this is what we have for the input field so we have the class name the type text we have the id and name set to input field max length of 120 we have the placeholder right here this field is required and then we have the on change handler perfect now let's go ahead and create the button and this is going to have a non-click function and it's going to be under search and let's add the svg which is the magnifying glass and it's gonna have that styling as well. Hit save. And if we now go to our index and import the search component, and make sure we display it as well. Hit save. And there we have it. We have the background, we have the H3 title, we have the input field with this placeholder, which disappears when we start typing and comes back once the input field is empty and we also have the button here with the magnifying glass this is very beautiful let's go on and continue adding the sponsored text below the input field and also the ad on the right side as well back to the search component we can actually minimize this uh, input field and we're not gonna go to the ad section yet because we're gonna add the sponsored text which is below the input field, but it's still in the search section component. So let's do a new section, give it a class name. Like this, and let's add the text sponsored.
So this is where we use what we imported right here from Web3 UI kit. Okay. So this is for the bean. And then we want to add the text 500 daily Morales beans for free. Like this. And below this, let's add another span element with the class name of styles. Should say styles.claim like this with the text claim them now and if we go back we can see that we just added this text right here beautiful now let's go on and create the add section next so we can actually minimize this this whole search container and add another one with class name of styles.add section like this And there we added the beans and the illustration which contains the wizard so let's save and go back and there we have it so we added this text we added some uh, floating styling to the beans so they can beautifully flow there and then we have the wizard as well and this is our ad now just to show you that everything works let's go back to our code and let's add the console log right here with the text response and add the response variable from here so this is the response we're getting back so let's go back here paste a wallet address in there open the inspector console and there we have it the response so what we want to save in our state variable is response.data.result so we can see right here we have this is a response object so we have dot data dot result and there we have all the transactions for this specific wallet address and from here we can easily choose what we want to display and that's what we're gonna do next we can go ahead and remove the console log because we don't need that anymore and just before the last closing section element we can add the show result variable and what we want to display if this is true now remember this is false from the start right here and then we set it to true within the handle search function so when this is true, we want to display some things. And what we want to display in this specific case is a component that we haven't created yet. It's going to be called search results. And we're going to pass along some props to it. Let's go to the top and also import it, even though we haven't created it yet. hit save and now let's actually create it so it's gonna be a new file and we're gonna name it search results.js and we're gonna need to import moment and also the styling as we've done in the previous files then we can go on and create the export default function which is gonna be called search results and it's gonna take a prop as an argument then we can add return and what we want to render so let's start with creating a section First thing we want to add is a paragraph and give it the class name of styles dot 
amount of transactions let's add some text so the latest 25 from a total of then we're gonna want to add let's do this it's gonna make things easier we're gonna want to display this the props dot result dot result dot length which is if you remember we had the response dot data dot result so we want to get the length of that to display how many transactions there is and we're only gonna show 25 out of x amount of transactions we're gonna have to create the transactions table so let's create a table element and give it the class name of styles dot transaction section like this and then add a t head and a table row and we're gonna give it a class name of transaction title i'm gonna paste in the header element so we're gonna have transaction hash we're gonna have method block age and it's gonna have blue text as class name we're gonna have from we're gonna have an empty one and then to and value and lastly transaction fee and it's also gonna have the same styling as the age and then we want to create a row for each and every transaction so below the table head we're gonna have to map through the props that we got in like this And we want to return, as I said, the table row. It's gonna have a class name of styles.transaction. We're gonna want to add a table data for each and every table header. So let's go on and do that. Here we want to display the hash of the transaction but we don't want to display the whole one so we're gonna slice it and then just add three dots at the end of it. Here we want to check if we have a decoded call for the transaction and if we do we want to display the label of it or otherwise we want to display unknown let's add another table data to display the block number it's gonna have a class name of styles.bluetext as well And then another one in this one we're gonna display the time so we're gonna use moment which is the library we installed and imported then we're gonna take the transaction timestamp for this block and format it the way we want like this and we're gonna use from now the next table data is gonna have the from address so we're gonna take that one from transaction dot from underscore address and we're gonna do some formatting here as well we want to slice this as well a little bit different than last time because we want to display the beginning but also the end of the of the address so we're gonna add two of these like this but we're gonna slice them on different um, occasions like this the next table data is a bit longer so i'm gonna paste the code in and just explain what we're doing so if you remember uh, we have this field where we display if it's an ingoing or outgoing transaction and if it's an ingoing transaction there's a green box with the text in and if it's an outgoing transaction it's an orange box with the text out 
So for the styling, we want to check is the from address not the same as the address that we put in the search input field, which means then it's an ingoing transaction. So we're going to give it the in transaction styling class. But if this is true, then it means it's an outgoing, excuse me, if this is false, then that means it's an outgoing transaction and we give it the out transaction. And we do the same check down here and we give it either the in text or the out text. Let's move on and add the two address instead. So let's give it a class name first. It's going to be styles.bluetext one more time. And then we're going to do the same thing we did for the from address up here. But we're going to do this for the to address. Let's also add the value, but we're going to have to do some calculations since ETH is 18 decimals like this. And then we don't want more than five decimals in when we display the text. The same calculation goes for the gas price. But this time we can allow up to 12 decimals. Let's hit save and go to the website, paste the wallet address. And there we have it. We have this beautiful transaction table. We can see we show the latest 25 from a total of 31 transactions. We have the hash, we have the method which displays uh, transfer or multi-call or private mint or in some cases unknown if the decoded call field is empty we have the block numbers we have the age the from and the two addresses beautifully formatted so we don't have too much numbers we have the outgoing and ingoing tags and then the value and the transaction fee now this is very very beautiful and you can see we don't need too much code we can easily do this once we get the data with just a few lines of code using morales we can very quickly display this data. Now, let's go back to the homepage and create the hero section, which contains data about the latest block. Uh, the, we display the latest blocks as well, and also the latest transactions in general. So let's close this one and this one, and let's also close this one and create a new component called hero section.js. And we're gonna import use effect and also use state like this then I import image we're gonna import axios we're gonna import moment a CSS file some icons that we want to use using Fort Awesome and lastly this image right here that I have uploaded inside the assets folder then let's create our export default function called hero section like this and we're gonna have to create some state variables actually we're gonna create a few ones so let's start with show result set this to true
next let's add a use effect for the request we're gonna have to do This is the same we did in the first request because we're getting the same data, the USD price. If you remember in the index.js file in our backend, we added this previous block info data right here with the block number, for example, and all the rest of the data. That's what we are getting right here. Now within use effect we have two functions. I have eth price, actually it's gonna be it should be get eth price and get block info. So we want to call these two functions as well. Like this. And that's everything we need to render the data that we want to display. So let's create a section with the class name of styles. Hero section container. And the same way as before, we're gonna add this show result. And if this is true, then we want to render things. So let's do that the same way as before. gonna paste in the SVG right here and this is the ETH logo let me minimize this to make it easier and hit save and then below this section let's create a new section with a class name of styles.hero underscore box
we're gonna have add this FA globe icon using this element right here. And then below this section, we're gonna add a new section with the class name of styles.hero underscore box. Close that section. And within that one, let's add the P tag with market cap. And another P tag, give it class of hero values and that the market cap now this is hard-coded value but you could easily use an api to get this data so we did this for ether price and for market cap we're gonna do the same for transactions and for last finalized block so i'm just gonna paste that code in and as you can see we're doing the same we have uh latest results section box right here we have the svg section with fa server icon uh, the word transactions and that value and then we do the same but with another icon for last finalized block and with the latest block data to be displayed and we're gonna add another section i'm gonna paste this code in as well so we're creating this section we have average value so this is the image the chart image that we imported on the top right here and we're gonna give it the styling of class chart let's move further down and create another section with the class name latest results underscore box and because we've done similar things before in this video i'm gonna paste this in and explain what's happening so this is a section we just pasted in we just created this one so we have the first section which is the title latest blocks and then we're gonna have a table for the table body, we're gonna map through block results and for each and every item within this array, we're gonna create a table row. We're gonna give it some conditional styling depending on if it's the last item or not. And then we're gonna add the data. So we're gonna add this font uh, icon for each and every row. It's gonna be the first table data. Then we're gonna have another table data with the TD block styling class name. And that's gonna display the block number and also the time. So we're gonna use moment once again, take the time, format it, and we're gonna display the data from now. And the last table data is gonna display the fee recipient. We're gonna slice the address of the miner the same way as we've done before. We're gonna add the number of the total transactions. And now to the final table data. So this was the second last, this is the last one. It's gonna show the gas used. I'm gonna paste this in as well hit save and then we can go to the top of it and it's basically the same as the latest blocks this one is the latest transactions so we're gonna have a table in here as well inside the table body we're gonna map through transactions result and we're gonna create a table row for each and every item the same way as before for the styling we have a conditional rendering if it's the last item or not and then the first table data is gonna be the icon the second one we're gonna add the td block once again and this is gonna be the transaction hash that we're slicing to display uh, in a more beautiful way and we're also gonna add the time when this happened the next table data is gonna contain both the from address and the to address so we're doing some some slicing uh, once again and you should be pretty used to it right now in this video because we've done it a few times and we're, we're also adding the total amount of transactions and lastly, in the last table data, we render the value and we are formatting it because ETH is 18 decimals. Make sure we go to our index file because we need to uh, import this hero section component. And then we also want to display it. And look at these guys, look how beautiful our own Etherscan clone looks. We've built our own blockchain explorer guys. We have the logo and the beautiful menu on top. We have this search section right here with the input field and the search functionality for it. We have this awesome ad to the right with the beans floating around. And don't forget to go to money.morales.io to claim your daily 500 free Morales beans. Besides that, we have this hero section with the current Ether price 
the latest transactions amount the latest finalized block number we have right here the latest blocks the latest transactions their hash the from address and to address the value guys we have so much data and this is just with a few lines of code not only that if we search for a wallet address we get the latest transactions uh, we can see the method and this is not hard coded as you've seen this is you us using the latest morales endpoint we can see if it's an ingoing or outgoing transaction and so much more guys i really appreciate doing this video i hope you appreciated it as much as i did and if you did so make sure you smash the like button 